ke Tapi Of course ada kan Nak nak ubah nanti takut makan masa pula kan Nak apa Okay I mean I'm fine I mean I'm very flexible Sebab my workplace uh, Flexible hours Dia boleh masuk bila-bila je oh. <laughs> As long as As long as uh, cukup 8 jam in a day Then yeah Oh macam tu uh, Nak buat Mrs. Kamila rasa nak buat bahasa Melayu ke bahasa English eh? Ke, ke uh, which one are you more comfortable? Tapi rasa saya cakap campur je. Ah, uh, <laughs> boleh. Oh, um, mana-mana uh, mana-mana kalau campur ke. Uh, okay. Yo, yo like terus suruh suruh submit recording juga ke? Ah, uh, tak penting tu untuk proof je lah ke. Ah, uh, yang dah apa? Yang kita orang buat. Ah, Tapi okay. tak perlu so, pun lah Okay so tak payahlah like oh, strictly English or strictly Bahasa Melayu oh, tak. Ah, Kalau kena submit okay, pun okay. tak apa pun kalau, kalau campur <coughs> Ah okay Okay ah, kita boleh start eh ah, Panggil Mrs. Camilla ke? Ah, Doktor Camilla ah, tak ke? Tak payahlah this, this title title just ah, Puan eh? Puan Camilla eh? Hello. Hello. Kau tahu ibu my first name ya. Hello. Oh, tadi ada ah. uh, ni sikit tadi hilang sekejap tadi. Hello. Ya. Yeah. Hello. Uh, um, boleh dengar ke? Uh, dengar dengar. Yes. Ah, okay. Eh. Okay. <coughs> uh, Need to start off. Uh, my name is Daniel. Mm-hmm. There is also Fauzan dan juga Fit. Uh, so you guys study apa dekat UTM? Uh, we all electrical, electrical engineering, tapi in electronics. And the elective that okay. we choose, mm-hmm. uh, the elective that we choose is medical electronics. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. And now the final year. Final year, final son. Nice, nice. Mm. <laughs> FYP yeah. dah siap. <laughs> On the way. Tengok buat. On the way. <laughs> buat FYP apa? Projek apa? Uh, Jan buat FYP projek apa Jan? <laughs> uh, <laughs> saya buat image recognition. Oh that's cool. That's cool. That's nice. Dengan MATLAB eh? Uh, tak. Pakai uh, Python. Python uh, OpenCV eh? CNN. Convolution Neural Network. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Ah, uh, rasa ni dah boleh start ke dah? Ah. Ya, Afiq tak introduce. Eh, oh, ah uh, saya <laughs> Mama Afiq, ah uh, saya FYP tak start lagi sebab saya lagi dua sem. Saya muda sikit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so ah uh, so first of all what we want is uh, can you introduce about yourself? Of course, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, I did like a presentation before. Oh. Um, to the students of UPNM. Oh. So I the I had the. Oh, I don't know why sharing is like this in Google. Yeah, <laughs> so but I did like a presentation before, like kind of like this about my career and like what I do as. So we don't want the first to approach, ah. <laughs> Oh, UTM. Uh, no, not really. Daripada UTM. Boleh nampak ke? Sekejap. If I... Don't know how this works. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Boleh nampak my presentation ke tak? Oh, uh, nampak tak. presentation? Uh, cuma slide je lah. Belum nampak lagi. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, Kenapa macam ni ya? Uh? Google me punya share. <laughs> <laughs> sharing screen. Oh, kalau tahu tadi... Uh, uh, I never shared lah. before. So... Apa? Uh, Puan Kamila boleh uh, briefly introduce into me? Yeah, me? sure. Okay, yeah. Mm. Boleh je, boleh je. Okay, so forget about this. Ah, tak payahlah perempuan macam. I'm not that old. <laughs> kalau, not that old. Oh, kalau, kalau panggil. Akak ke? Ya. Panggil akak. Rasa, rasa segan lah. <laughs> Dia punya level tu jauh. <laughs> yeah, ke? Tak adalah, tak adalah. Tak adalah. <laughs> I think it's like, it's... Typical Malaysian culture kot macam nak oh. Respect orang Tapi kat sini macam semua orang panggil by first name je oh, yeah, yeah. Okay so 
So yeah, so uh, you know my full name. So I go by Camila. Uh, currently, I'm in Germany. I'm a research test engineer at a biomedical company called Abiomed, or well, it's an American company that bought a local German company. So the Germans pronounce it as Abiomed. Oh. Maybe the Americans call it that. A biomed, I don't know. <laughs> so um, right now it's almost six years. I'm in Germany. October ni cukup lah enam tahun. So but when I first came here was it um, to do my masters for two years, and then I work here now uh, two and a half years. So now macam dah nak masuk uh, tiga tahun lah kerja kat sini. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so from the beginning, um, nah, nak start dari mana? Ya? <laughs> uh, high school, high school, high school SBP dekat Kelantan, uh, semester ku Muhammad Faris Petra, tapi asal KL. Uh, and then I did my pre-university dekat Taylor's in Subang Jaya. And then bachelor dekat Canada for four years. Oh. Uh, the degree was called electrical and biomedical engineering. So it's not like a double degree, tapi dia just nama je lah macam tu. Dia letak electrical at the beginning tu sebab masa tu the program was quite new and then they think like okay nanti nak cari kerja orang tak tahu lah apa benda biomedical engineering oh, letak yeah. je lah electrical to be safe. So so macam uh, tapi the course itself was like the first year tu general engineering so semua orang ambil course sama with like three math courses and two physics courses and then ada lah satu course material science and programming and AutoCAD and then the second year tu baru macam specialize for the next three years um, so the courses are, are really similar to electrical engineering I don't know what you guys learn tapi ada lah macam circuit theory uh, circuit design analog digital um, apa tu microelectronics uh, electromagnetics and then ada lah uh, programming course, ada C and um, Java and Python a little bit. And then, but I did most of my courses uh, related to signal processing. So, so tak banyak sangat like minding and electronics and circuits. So I'm mostly working in MATLAB, uh, creating digital filters and stuff like that. And my FYP was um, uh, seizure detection, portable seizure detection. So we design the sensors and then other like 20 channels um uh so we try to detect eeg so I'm, i guess you guys learn about that mm-hmm. uh so basically signals from your brain and then we try to use uh svm support vector machine so a little bit of machine learning to determine if the signals are are showing that someone is having a seizure or not so oh. <laughs> yeah lah. yeah and then the past two Balik Malaysia kerja setahun But I did not work as an engineer uh, Masa tu kerja dekat this company 3DS That makes uh, Apa ni? Uh, apa dia nama dia? Solidworks Yeah, this company makes Solidworks And they bought this company called Quintic This Dutch company called Quintic And this company specializes in making uh, Supply chain and logistics planning software So it's totally different from what I did. So, belajar benda baru lah. So, it's like, belajar pasal supply chain, belajar pasal... Um, and then, the soft, the, pro, the the program they use is not... The, the programming language they use is not... No, it's not the standard programming language. It's their own programming language. So, oh. they macam nak... <coughs> they macam nak optimize the mathematical operations that go behind them in and using a much cleaner syntax daripada macam buat straight in Java with all this Java syntax. So, they're like, uh, like, it's nang lah. And then they build like, their own libraries for uh, optimization. So, that was pretty cool. Tapi, because it's a, a programming language yang tak orang lain tak standard yang tak pakai. So, it's, I was thinking macam, mm, susah sikit ko lah nak, nak, nak tukar kerja sebab people don't know what this is. <laughs> and mm. so, um, yeah. So, my next move was, yeah, I applied for a master dekat sini. Tiga kali juga apply, <laughs> baru dapat accepted. Um, sebab universiti dekat Germany, this one particular universiti ni memang tak dia, dia, dia budget dia hot lah kot. So, dia macam susah sikit nak masuk. Oh. And most of the people yang 
apply kat sini macam they force you to do like additional courses sebab kononnya macam dia tak recognize lah your your university course macam oh dia dia macam tak up to standard dengan dia orang punya so dia suruh ambil some prerequisite course baru boleh ambil tu but I was lucky I did not have to uh, so dua setengah tahun buat master um, master kat sini it's like one year of courses so each same day macam half a year gitu oh, full time and then lah tak ada lah macam master tu yeah full time oh. And then, yeah, so macam like eight or nine courses per semester Banyak jugalah, macam gila sikit ke sini oh. And <laughs> and then tak the scholarship macam Bachelor dulu, it was from my job savings Sebab hmm. my first job tu kerja shift lah juga Because it's like customer support So macam ada shift Asia, shift uh, Europe, shift US macam tu So banyak kerja shift adalah macam savings kan uh, And then the the first year I tak kerja because like busy dengan kelas semua tu. Uh, the second year tu, uh, first half of the year with the thesis and then the second half is like mandatory industrial internship. So and during my thesis tu, uh, kerja lah part time. Sebab kat Germany ni, uh, living cost tak tinggi sangat where I live. And then ada banyak macam jobs for students So boleh sambil-sambil tu kerja And then dapat lah juga macam duit cukup lah nak bayar rent kan And then normally companies pun suka ambil students To be like student workers So macam because they have like uh, internal R&D as well So boleh lah kerja macam research assistant or stuff like that oh. Or kerja admin pun Dia orang ambil juga So that's one advantage dekat Germany lah And then yeah Mm-hmm. Any questions so far? <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I just want to ask the, the yes. Germany applying for study uh, macam kan dia orang uh, buat free education kan? Maybe yes. Kalau untuk uh, maybe saya saya nak melangkah seterusnya ke master contohnya mm-hmm. uh, cara apa untuk saya apply tu? Okay, so that's a good question. So to be honest, I didn't apply to so many universities in Germany. I just applied to one. So, um, the PRSA application process is the same. You just go to the website and then there is like an application portal. Um, I did that, but it's about um, university ni macam. <laughs> Macam susah nak masuk kan, so memang lah apply apply, lepas tu tak ada reply uh, So my next step was to find a professor and I just terus emailed it directly and told him that I'm interested to do master and what are my options and then dia boleh lah tolong macam cakap dekat admin macam oh, okay please can you look at this application and then push it forward So basically for master and PhD ni memang highly recommended that you approach a professor first just email them directly don't be other lah macam email dekat website tu and tell them your interest like the way you guys emailed me like stating your interest yeah that's like a professional way to do it so it's basically the same thing and then attach lah macam uh, CV and uh, attach CV and transcript or whatever so that's senang lah nak tengok macam oh okay so dia ni bagus and then you summarize lah sikit and I think what's most important for them is like stating your area of interest because they nak tengok macam match tak dengan apa dia punya focus sekarang like if they have funding and stuff like that and then uh, yeah at least that's 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 what I found from Germany lah even masa nak buat internship pun interview kat sini tak adalah macam susah sangat macam you know macam oh uh, you tahu apa je what kind of skills do you have like what do you want to offer to us macam okay apa training you dah ada you know dekat sini is more like okay apa you interested nak buat and then we find tasks for you that's the big part of the oh. interview so dia tak dia tak stress sangat lah and to and to my surprise sebab I datang sini tak belajar German dulu which was a mistake on my part sebab um okay. Kalau day to day tu macam Diorang macam default guna German kan So macam Susah sikit lah nak bersosial uh, Tapi I was surprised when it comes to job interviews They are quite flexible So diorang boleh je macam interview in English Sebab They're more interested to get people than Well it depends on the company Some company macam Dia macam 
Dia tak boleh tolerate Kalau you tak cakap German Dia nak juga you cakap German Tapi some, But what I found is Even though I applied for the job position Even though dia tulis dalam German ke apa Google Translate je lah And then I upload my CV and cover letter In English Surprisingly ada some of them Macam Get back to me in English And told like Okay we'd like to call you in for an interview So basically Dia orang lebih tengok pada Your CV and skills And they really need people So Uh, so I got called to a couple of interviews before lah And um, Yeah and I found out that the interview process At least for internship is quite um, It's quite relaxed Because they're more They are willing to train you So even if you come in with nothing oh. They macam They can accept lah I mean internship macam baru keluar university Tak tahu apa Macam okay Yeah I mean that's that's the way to go And uh, Yeah so I did Half a year internship And what I did in my internship uh, This are memang betul Biomedical engineering related stuff But Some people might say it's not it's some Because people have different ideas Of what biomedical engineering is um, So I came in my internship As also like a software test engineer But I'm testing the software That's being used By the research team In a biomedical company So the way it works is Uh, the research team will explore different technologies and we will develop it and then if it works then the next stage is we hand over to the uh, product team and they will develop it further for commercial uses so dalam research team ni they line lah daripada um, like a production or live commercial cust- uh, customer facing system because my first job was technical support so much I'm kind of customer facing so all my products are like Dah. All my software products dah siap semua And I'm mm. just like supporting them You know like Windows support Okay did you turn it on and off again like, <laughs> Sometimes mm. some things don't work And then I look into the code And then try to debug Like Kat mana masalah dia And then I report it to the development team And then they will do a software change But in research it's a different pace Because there's no expectation I mean there is expectation Tapi macam You don't have to solve it like in 30 minutes So you don't have to like solve it You don't have to submit the project in the next uh, One month or uh, or so And then they're much more fluid So there's more exploratory They have like a list of like project ideas And then they just let you They give you something And then they're like Okay, explore if this works or not So it's more free So they're like Okay, now I want to test this camera chip On this microcontroller Because maybe we want to do like An image recognition system That's why I said your uh, If I it was interesting <laughs> So we wanted to do Like an image recognition system To see if we can uh, Reliably uh, Get a placement signal Based on the pressure Because what my company does Like my internship company Is now my current company um, What my company does is They produce heart pumps So when they use these heart pumps is uh, during like surgery for like heart support kalau jantung lemah sangat so they can it cannot pump enough blood while the surgery is happening so they use the heart pump as uh, support and now yang paling baru they integrated it with the ECMO machine so you have lung support and you also have our heart pump and or you use it for like Heart support until they get a, a, a heart transplant So in the meantime, we pakai palm dulu uh, So we make the heart pumps Which is a mechanical construction Because they have the impel The the motor and the rotors and everything But it also comes with the controller Which is uh, it's really big It's like the size of a microwave <laughs> Because it's such an old technology Macam Dah 15 tahun kot <laughs> Dah 15 tahun But we're working on Getting a smaller version So that you can Wear it on yourself And yeah Instead of Kena duduk Dekat tepi katil, dekat tepi katil With a huge controller uh, But this controller Macam Yeah it has the Hardware aspect And uh, It also has The software aspect We don't sell our software We just Give the hospitals The controller With the software inside So we offer it As a service What we sell is the heart pumps and the, all the uh, stuff that comes with it with like the introducer and the catheter, whatever, just to get the heart pump inside. So there's like a package. Uh, yeah, so company ni ada branch dekat, the main HQ is in US, in Danvers. And then there's this branch dekat Aachen, which is like in the city where I did my uh, master's. And um, another branch, but mostly for sales in Japan. So, 
dekat Asia macam tak banyak sangat like most of clients are dekat Germany and dekat US so yeah and then back to the internship story yes yeah, so I'm a software I was a soft I still am a software test engineer and my project was to uh, we were trying to build a hardware module that can be placed inside this controller to mimic certain um, events for example like uh, connecting a pump so why we want to do these things connecting a pump and then simulating some signals why we want to do this about uh, for testing sometimes you don't have all the pumps because it's quite difficult to produce one or that I'm researching of course I we break things all the time maybe you don't have the pumps and then uh, we want to automate tests like basically so we have like a test server through Jenkins and you can like uh, create a Jenkins job and then it will run some tests on the uh, controller software just to see like okay are certain alarms triggering or not so yeah and my job was to test this hardware module punya communication protocol so it communicates through um serial rs232 as well as a uh, controller area network can so controller area network ni mostly in automotive lah guna but they want to apply it to uh this medical industry juga sebab lagi senang nak um are you guys familiar with this uh terms like rs232 uh, no, no, and no, can no 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 the serial yeah yeah, so they 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 see your interface, ah, kan? Um, mm. So the basically the boards inside the console talk to different parts uh, by sending a serial input and output and control the area network. Nipon is um, the messages come in like certain byte lengths and then ada lah dia punya data format. So basic, but basically the gist of it is that it's just a communication format. It's just sending certain hex numbers to 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 communicate like the data apa semua kan so can ni mostly into our external communication je because maybe we want to control we want to put like two or three different consoles and then we want to con- control them at the same time through a single command so it's easier to use can and yeah that's the idea and then i didn't do the hardware itself so i did not like do the circuit design and solder and everything what i'm doing is just checking the peripherals and I automate this uh, peripheral testing with Python. So I wrote like a test automation script. So I did like some libraries and then we use like a Raspberry Pi to to automate sending the input messages and then writing the uh, result back into a text file that we can compare. So that was my internship. And then I did like juga macam other smaller projects like a pressure control system, uh, pressure con- um so basically we have like this uh, device that controls a motor that pinches a tube to change the pressure because there is some um, procedure in the company that for each of these pump it has its own individual characteristic curve and in order to measure that curve it's basically the curve is just a relation between um, pressure and flow so we don't have a flow meter on the pump because we want to keep it small we cannot have so many sensors so we only have a pressure sensor or an optical sensor and so we want to calculate the flow based on the pressure and the pressure also gives you like the position of the pump in the heart so but in order to know the flow it's kind of correlated to the pressure so we do the, we run some tests where we change the pressure and then we measure the flow with a real flow meter so that so we have a pressure control device for this so um we developed that and then um i didn't do any like test automation for this one so basically we developed that and then we test it manually lah, like to see if it works but it's like but it's a very simple um uh, board i guess compared to the to mm-hmm. yang kalau uh, test manually yeah, so basically, kalau ada macam a physical device with buttons on it, basically instead oh. of sending a signal from code, I'm just pressing the buttons. Ah. More, more so, errors, ah. Yeah, so that was what I was doing. Uh, I'm, I'm manually testing it, but it was a very simple device compared to the controller. I just like two board, je, satu CP, satu microcontroller. So it's not that, it's not that complex. So I did that for half a year. 
Um, and then after that, I changed to a different industry again. <laughs> Oil and gas pulled out for two years because I joined the leadership program. So I think you're not interested in that part <laughs> for this co- for this uh, session. And then I left that company. I came back to the company where I did my internship. And now I'm kind of doing the same thing, a few different projects. Uh, so um, last complete, year I started... Complicated project more like. Yes, definitely. And last year, uh, one project was also testing this like communication for uh, for another for a Wi-Fi module. So I did all this TCP/IP stuff, and um, yeah, I can't really say more than that about that really sucky. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's that's what I did. And then the past two, also I was still working on test automation because. Uh, we wanted to integrate the the test the test automation framework from Python that we can automate through a Jenkins job as well, and then and then directly to the hardware module that I helped test during my internship. So they want to integrate those two things together. It's about the the Jenkins based one was developed in US, and then they didn't know at all about our hardware module. That means. If you want to run the test automation, young the, the American team did, you still need to physically connect the pump and everything, so it's not really automated. So we don't have like a simulation environment for the for the controller for the console. So that's why we have to do our automation this way. I don't know, maybe in the future, like we will develop it. But yeah, so like I was working on that. So mostly I was creating Python scripts and Python libraries for test automation purposes. And then the past two, I had like some tasks. They had, they didn't have enough resources, so I was pulled into like uh, formal testing, uh, commercial software for a uh, commercial release. So this that means it's no longer like research. This one, Macham did not, you know, start selling it to the customer. So before that, you need some uh, very a lot of testing to make sure your software works because environmental and uh, companies. Safety is very important, and then we have to go through FDA approval. So, a chamde lagi stringent la, and then of course, as for like electronic devices, it has to comply to certain uh, power levels for patient safety, and then we have a lot of risk assessment because um, if something fails, then it really means that. Um, Someone might die. <laughs> they will die. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we're gonna make sure the software is smart enough to have to handle diff- ver- a lot of different modes of failure. And a lot of st- testing is also done on animals. So the like people who are in charge of the animal testing, we are always busy because, um, yeah lah, it's about. But you don't you, you want to see how la, because because you only yeah. Uh, yeah, you have to see how it fails in the animals. And, it's very, and very broad uh, testing, right? Because there's yeah. animal and then there's software. Because, because yes. the safety is very uh, important. Yes, yes, definitely. And I myself, um, normally I'm not responsible to go to this animal testing, but sometimes they will ask software people to go there to maybe like install new software or change the console or just for support lah, takut macam um, things fail, especially um, internet connection because while you're doing animal testing, we're also like collecting data. Oh. So most of the problems is with data collection, maybe there's lost data packet, lost internet connection, or the pump itself is not um, behaving properly. So macam dia ada alarms yang tak sepatutnya, or it did not um, throw any alarms, which is more problematic so sometimes we go there to support so that's part of my job scope and then uh, currently now I'm working on an internal uh, device that's being used for internal testing so not a customer product but this device is very important because there are many kegunaan there are like a lot of different functionalities and uh, yeah, so now I'm testing the pro- the the device, and it's quite a complicated thing because um, you have to test it on different levels because you have the device with the keypad to control the signals, and you also have a stepper motor 
and you also have a lab view application that someone developed to automate um, the device operation so you can like click a button on the lab view application then it will draw charts of the data and it will send some commands to the device and I was writing a Python script to automate this testing. So once I simulate, instead of having the full testing all these things together, I simulate different parts of the device so that we do component testing. So that, yeah, so it's more modular. So if something, if one feature change, I don't have to test everything with all the equipment. So once it's much faster testing. So, uh, so yeah, as you can see, this is like the theme of my career so far. I have about testing, not so much on uh, device development uh, because, yeah, I mean, it depends because this company is more of, uh, you have, it's more hardware, I guess, because they design the controller boards and a lot of it is also mechanical because they design the, the motor and the rotor and the pump housing and everything. And it's also a lot of biomaterials. So we have a lot of chemists who study the bio interaction between the tissue and the pump. So because the pump, you're rotating and then it creates heat and then is it an acceptable amount of heat inside the human body? And sometimes the tissue will um, form a, 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 I don't know how to call it, fibrosis around the, the pump if it's not like biocompatible, so it needs to be like macam, like non-reacting. And yeah, and then also mechanically as well, like it cannot rotate too fast because otherwise you destroy the blood cells, but you have to deliver enough um, power, enough rotation to ensure a certain like output of the heart. And then we also have some a lot of algorithm design so from the software side we have a lot of like algorithm design like how to calculate the flow how to calculate the placement how to calculate how to detect if there's like a suction condition going on so for example if it's not so when the heart deteriorates some tissues degenerate and then um, there's maybe some change in pressure so it cannot maintain and then it starts to be in a in a suction condition so the pump will be moved and sometimes it, it cuts out of the heart valve like it's not it's supposed to be in the ventricle that maybe it's about suction or your um, atrium or something and then yeah you can see like a drastic uh, pressure drop so we don't want that condition so yeah we have a lot of these like algorithms and then at the same time the pump also has to react to like how the heart is pumping so it needs to be smart enough to change its uh, speed and uh, output because the heart changes. So, chantula. So that's I'm mostly on the software side of things. So I don't know much um, mm. how these mechanical people do their work. So even though I'm a tester, like, but I'm kind of also a developer because I work a lot with code. Mm. Um, and because it's research, they're much lebih bebas lah. Kalau macam rasa macam okay, aku dah bosan what manual testing maybe i want to develop some microcontroller code which is also what i'm doing right now as well uh, you can you, it's more like free i have like variety of like tasks that i can do so now i'm also oh, uh, master the yeah. yeah it's very flexible so master the um as a bachelor tak banyak sangat like low level programming microcontroller ni so now they have a lot of like microcontroller uh projects so, so i'm trying I'm learning how to do the microcontroller programming. So it's like, so yeah, it's always a lot of opportunity. Uh, no, it's just uh, C. So still high level lah, tapi tak. Oh. Tak. Yeah, but it's relatively lower than Python or Java, right? So, mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so that's kind of like what I do. Some people, like last time I balik Malaysia last year, I was uh, doing some interviews um, I interviewed with this company called Materialize I think they're a Belgium company tapi ada branch kat Malaysia and uh, dekat Damansara I believe and uh, they make 3D prints of prosthetics so they, 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 they don't just make it they also have their own software to do it 
Uh, so that's basically materialized. So I went for an interview with them. They don't really consider me a biomedical engineer because they think I am a software engineer because their definition of a biomedical engineer is someone who also has more uh, clinical background. So basically someone who's more on the medical and physiological side of things. So for them, their biomedical engineer is more like a consultant. Like they know th- that the patient has certain medical conditions and needs. So they're like doctor lah juga. They boleh tahu some basics of diagnosis and then they can make a recommendation that, okay, this product is the best for you, something like that. So that is their idea of a biomedical engineer. So to them, I'm not lah, even though it's like I work in a, medi- a biomedical company. I did biomedical engineering. And even in my bachelor's study, we did one year of anatomy and physiology dengan budak-budak medik. So it's like I know a little bit, but not a lot. So, but they don't consider me one. So I think it really depends. Um, uh, yeah, who you talk to about like what is a biomedical engineer. And mm. dekat sini pun, actually there are, I don't see any roles with the formal title of biomedical engineer. It's always... Yeah, yes. So it's always just your traditional engineering title. It's like you're a software engineer or electrical engineer, mechanical engineer. But if you work for a biomedical company, everybody's a biomedical engineer. So oh. they don't. that's why they don't need to do that titles. But it's not descriptive, right? Like what is a biomedical engineer? So yeah, that's why I am a research, so- research software test engineer. Yeah. Tapi dekat Malaysia, I nampak lah ada a couple of like... Uh, roles which are labeled biomedical engineer tapi dia lain-lain lah and it's about there are some biomedical engineers who work more on like uh, medical device maintenance or and they call that as biomedical engineer so macam like people who fix these imaging machines and then maintain do procurement so oh, the they call technician them technician stuff uh, like the exactly the technician stuff so they call them biomedical engineer but in US they they have also this like biomedical engineer role tapi it's also more kind of like a hybrid between people with clinical backgrounds who also does medical research but then also does um some engineering design or like it's someone who's like i don't think all these technicians they would consider biomedical engineer as how they do in malaysia um so basically if you're designing any medical device you are a biomedical engineer and then it also depends on the field because you have electrical, you have software, you have mechanical, you have chemical, and then you have all this tissue engineering stuff as well. But normally, we don't consider that as biomedical engineering. That's tissue engineering. So it's, they just work more with cells rather than like mechanical or electrical parts. So we don't consider that biomedical engineering. Some people do, like uh, if you go to some universities, they do consider that biomedical engineering. Um, but mostly, I think from my experience, biomedical engineering is a lot of like, um, it's kind of interdisciplinary between electrical and mechanical. So it's a lot of like mechatronics systems, especially in Germany. So uh, because like my current prod, it's like, yeah, my bachelor memang tak sentuh sangat all these circuit boards and not let alone motors but in my current company like the pump is a mechanical construction it has a motor so even though i not so familiar with that i had to learn about like how motors work or how to do if something breaks on the circuit board then how do i at least find out what went wrong and then how to fix it and how everything works together and then also some like okay what how the the physiology works because your pump needs to operate at a condition that makes sense to the human body. It cannot just like, okay, it outputs this pressure, it's okay. <laughs> or okay, this thresh- it, it, it operates above this threshold, but you don't understand like why we have this threshold. So it's a lot of learning different things. So even though, yes, I'm mostly doing electrical stuff, tapi dia macam kena tahu juga lah all this mechanical stuff. So that's kind of a summary of what I believe biomedical engineering to be and it's actually quite diverse the jobs for biomedical engineering because you can also be like uh, my 
I have a lot of like friends who are like in mechanical engineering and they do a lot of 3D printing bio parts. Um, and they do also a lot of this like modeling, like modeling human movement because they want to design like certain prosthetics. So you need to know like certain dynamics. So they do a lot of this like uh, biological systems modeling. And then of course, when it comes to digital stuff, memang ada banyak benda. It's like people who work in software who like create cloud systems for like medical data communication. That's always a lot. Uh, and I think you guys have heard of like IOTs and stuff, big data, all these sensors, like uh, wearables. And uh, and of course, this machine learning, medical imaging for um, I I tried to apply for medical imaging jobs, but but most of them prefer people with PhD or people with experience with uh, MRI images. So they do want people who do have some clinical background for these things. I don't know about Malaysia, but I'm really interested in those jobs. Cuma tu dah, like, um, I have to do a PhD. <laughs> and my master thesis for actually is kind of related to uh, imaging. It's about this technology called uh, photoplethysmography. I think you guys know kan macam the pulse oximeter yang letak kat jari and measure your heart rate. So you can do that as well with a camera system. And you can put like a, a red wavelength filter on the camera lens. And then basically what you do is um, uh, what I did was I did a Fourier transform. And then I look at the frequency of the image intensity on each pixels and then uh, through some processing somehow i can extract the heart rate or breathing rate from that because um yeah because the light penetrates yeah i'm going into all the right. technical details right. <laughs> i don't know if you guys are interested or not yeah, but stop me very if... very interesting because you you yeah. did not measure the frequency you measure the frequency of the image right rather than the subject uh, yes, so the whole point of it was for contactless monitoring. So you just put camera over the person and then you can move around tak payah pakai apa-apa and then you can measure their heart rate or like vital signs basically. And my application was too was for uh newborns in the ICU. Oh. So to reduce like infant mortality, so you have to you have to uh monitor their vital signs in a, a certain period of time. So if their vital signs are showing uh some signs then yeah then they, they are in danger of like dying so that was my project at that time well, I was still to this day i really like it tapi tu lah sebab my supervisor masa tu nak buat phd tapi dia oh cakap oh my, my funding kena cut so tak boleh nak continue so okay <laughs> okay then i look for a job <laughs> yeah banyak ada kami dah cerita dah menjawab soalan kami yeah uh, but if you have more questions, so yeah. Tapi this is helpful for you, right? To get an idea of what we do. Um, yeah, we also have medical robotics here. And by now, all these like uh, robotics, medical robotics stuff, they were trying to combine. They want to combine imaging and robotics because how do you get position on the, no, especially for surgical robots. So how do you get position on the surgery? So you need some kind of feedback and that feedback is usually a camera that looks at where the robot is that basically register the robot's position and movement and then yeah so i also did an interview with a company b brown i think you've heard then tapi this was a new branch of b brown where they wanted to start this medical robotics um uh, product so it's more like a research branch as well um, but yeah I, they wanted a more experienced software developer I applied I know that my resume doesn't say that I I was a software developer mostly testing but I am capable of writing software but they were like okay but we want someone more experienced but it was an interesting interview because they talk about like what they research and then like you know it's a, it's a very interesting idea like like medical robotics and yeah and yeah to be honest some like banyak banyak kerja by medical engineering yang sangat interesting and to be honest you also don't need to have a biomedical engineering degree to look for biomedical engineering jobs because 
they accept everyone from any engineering field. So like you can be software, mechanical, there's always something to do. And you learn as you go. And even now, even though I did some biomedical engineering, I know some medical terms, tapi I'm still always learning new things. So yeah, it's very interesting. It's a very rewarding career, I think. And especially now during COVID, um, at that time I was in the oil and gas company, like oil and gas was declining. <laughs> And then, like all these biomedical companies, like, um, uh, that produce those um, uh, lung machines, are like growing because of COVID. It's like, oh, okay, kind of miss biomedical engineering now, because <laughs> I had an offer from uh, this company that makes dialysis machines. But then I, I took this oil and gas job instead because they said, like, oh, okay, it was a management trainee program, uh, a leadership program, they call it. So, okay, like, I try something new. But then after that experience, I realized, okay, I think I like being in biomedical engineering more. So I came back. And yeah, Malaysia, tak tahu lah. when I graduated bachelor, tak banyak sangat jobs. But when I came back last year, because I did materialize me and they were growing their team, they were expanding their office and then they I heard about all these different jobs they have. It kind of seems promising and I think we should be getting more like if we were to progress in the way that we have jobs that, that are like in Germany for biomedical engineering, I think Malaysia would be a really nice place to work. Cuma sekarang dia macam very slow lah. And I remember uh, I actually am found 2009 lama gila. So, so macam um, masa tu ada lah pergi some like career event. I asked, I asked about like biomedical engineering masa tu because I wanted to do biomedical engineering. And this senior engineer laugh in my face. I'm like, ha, kenapa nak buat biomedical engineering? Sebab it's a dead field. So, siapa je yang buat? So, it's a new field and then so it's not going to be successful in Malaysia. So, okay, but now you see with the COVID situation, everybody understands it's like important all these medical products like we need them so i hope i hope uh, the industry in malaysia continue, continues to uh, expand uh, and even without like biomedical engineering specifically i feel like there's a lot of like startup companies that focus on doing these iot's and all this big uh, digitalized <laughs> they call it digitalization and big data stuff and machine learning, I think there's a lot of like growth in Malaysia. So they could be, they could be doing for different applications. Tapi if they have like a biomedical company client, you'll be also doing like something related to biomedical engineering. So it's like, yeah, it's very broad, I'd yeah. say. Because my, my lecturer also said that uh, when, when we, see, when, because the, now technology is uh, so advanced. We have the, all these five Gs, all these mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some things. Yeah. But in, in the medical, uh, in the healthcare industry, the div all the devices are still old. They use because of yes, because of yeah. the regulations and mm. whatnot. It's very very hard to introduce new, and they're very expensive, right? And yes, yes. I I totally agree about the regulation. To memang betul, memang betul dekat. <laughs> In my current company pun banyak masa, yeah, tak ada masalah the, the tapi macam dia leci. Someone will die. <laughs> exactly yeah. and then um, <laughs> it's opinion, different in different countries. How, 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 in your opinion, how can this be addressed? Because it's very, uh, the way we see it is very uh, macam uh, sayang lah kan? Tak boleh nak. Yeah, memang sayang. Uh -huh. Memang sayang. So let me tell you something like my experience with a doctor at Sydney. I think Malaysian doctors are very, very, very good at their jobs. Because doctor at Sydney, so but I rasa they have a lot of reliance on these medical, these smart medical devices. They are macam tak the instinct out when they do their diagnosis. They very much depend on okay, does my machine say this person has this disease or not? You know. Kalau macam, dia tak boleh nak, nak, nak rasa dengan dia sendiri dia macam okay, maybe I, sh maybe I could check some other symptoms to, to you know, to determine betul ke dia ada benda ni. Dia, dia macam like, 
ah, the machine ni cakap tak inclusive, so okay kita buat test lagi. So that's the kind of doctors dekat sini because I feel like they started their career macam dah ada dah all these fancy machines and then they are kind of like trained with it and sebab Germany dia macam I guess sebab negeri kaya kan so they can afford oh. to like <laughs> buy all this stuff and a lot of it yang government tanggung. So they have too much of a good life here so jadi macam manja lah sikit kan so <laughs> so to be, <laughs> memang kalau sakit kat Germany ni memang susah susah gila sebab doktor dia macam I tak yakin dengan doktor dekat sini So Mungkin dia punya lagi Independence lah lagi Dah biasa Dengan the device Ya Exactly Dengan the device Exactly And then Memang mahal Ya and then memang mahal Memang mahal Because if you have diagnosis With all this like Apa ya PET scan They call it scintigraphy here PET 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 scan MRI Semua tu The cost will go up <laughs> a lot and last time for i think i did mri dekat private hospital kat malaysia pun like i think it cost me 5000 <laughs> so wow. lot just, 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 just one test see why the insurance so <laughs> <laughs> i look at the bill as like oh my god mahal yeah. so <laughs> so sini pun sama lah uh, so sini pun macam like uh, there's a whole like business around industry but coming back to your question about like how we deal with this regulation and introducing new new products That really is a very good uh, question. It's a very important topic because um, the Germany has different standards. But the thing is, Germany is more. Even though they are much like in terms of, let me tell you something as well. Malaysia honestly lagi maju in terms of like adopting apps and software solutions. But here they are a bit resistant to that because they are such like. Ah, nanti benda ni collect data aku So macam Oh privacy You know so, oh, data security concern So like we have this My sejahtera Yeah Banyak scandal about that I know I know But I find it much easier to use Than here So here memang Dia ada Dia ada lah app to store your COVID um, Vaccination information But that's all you can do You cannot like Do contact tracing Sebab you tak ada scan-scan QR semua ni Sebab dia macam Nah nanti government Track my location lah Apa tah So dia macam They're a bit resistant about, about software solutions. But when it comes to mechanical or hardware solutions, they're very accepting. So that's why dekat sini macam nak introduce medical products is a bit easier. It's like, or as long as it's like a mechanical, um, it's like a mechanical um, product, kan? Tapi kalau if it's just solely software, it's very difficult because people here are like, I don't want to change the way I work. This, this, this device works. I have been using it like this. Why should I change? <laughs> Dia jenis macam tu mentality mm. dia. But when it comes to device, it's like, oh, okay, for sure I want because a lot of it is being like subsidized by the government. So, diorang rasa macam, dia tak rasa apa pun kalau ada macam new device. Tapi in um, Japan also, they have their own regulation. I can't say for sure, like, how, how is their acceptance. Um, US is more willing to have software solutions than the Germans do. Um, So yeah, it's different. And I think Malaysia pun masalah kita I think mostly is about funding. Mm. Mostly is about the money, it's always about the financial stuff. But I think our doctors can really um so, it can really help them if we have all these tools, right? Because um it may make their work a lot easier. Maybe you can diagnose faster and I'm pretty sure they're competent enough to use it to their advantage as an additional diagnosis, right? Compared to doctors kat sini yang macam like tak tahu apa kan? Oh, <laughs> Bukan true. semua, tapi my experience banyak yang macam tu lah. So, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, tapi, yeah. And then, and coming to this question of like um, acceptance is, um, is the question of, apa ni? Uh, yeah, in my previous job, I did this like, um, leadership program kan so ada lah one one rotation to i was in project management sort of with the product helping to more like secretary for the product managers lah kan <laughs> <laughs> so i tolong dia orang dengan project yang dia nak organize their projects and stuff and then tapi what i learned from the experience from the product managers so this is something that that a lot of engineers macam are shielded from because mostly the when the managers come to us they're like okay build this thing my customer wants this thing but uh, yeah. you don't understand why they want this thing our job was just to like translate this want into a technical um 
into a technical design. So, but when I was in the product management group, uh, what I learned is that um, people want a lot of things. So oh, <laughs> it is yeah. the product manager's job to decide which one is actually important and which one is the one that they are most willing to accept in the market. And if you want to introduce, and especially if it's the other way around, when we found something really cool in research and we think it's going to revolutionize the technology and we make a product out of it and put it on the market hoping that people will see oh how cool it is and how you know groundbreaking it is but then that's the product manager's job to introduce that so it's quite rare sometimes that um things that come from research instead of from the customer to be successful because you have to kind of communicate to your customers that okay this is the next best thing and then you have to come and there are different types of customers as well so i did some this like marketing book so there's one group where they call it early adopters so these people are the ones who are like oh i i don't care if it has a history of working or not or if, if what kind of risk it has it's something new i want to try it i want this product i will buy it so you have this wow. type of people but uh, most people are the type engineers much i'm like yeah, I'm going to see like how it goes. I want to see some history of usage, how successful it is. Or oh, oh, when other people start buying, baru aku nak beli sebab aku, aku tak nak ambil risk that, mm. you know, I buy it and then it doesn't work for me. Aku nak tengok dulu, like chill dulu. Mm. And then there's this other group yang macam like mati-mati, dia tak nak. Kan? Dia mati-mati, dia tak nak. So when you're doing marketing, you have to be, you have to know what's your target. Like mm. how big is each of these segments. So when I was in the oil and gas industry, we also have like research and we were doing drilling automation. So we're making software to um, to automate drilling processes. So instead of like other this like physical driller dekat situ, macam asyik kena tengok all these pressure gauge and stuff, like the software will just like show an alarm. Okay, it's this, this you have to, this, you have to pay attention to this one. And then you don't have to like manually like calculate, okay, what's the next? Uh, drilling speed I need or f- drilling force or whatever I don't I don't think that apa benda <laughs> banyak sangat so it's like well how much was was I want I want to drill in this direction so how do I change that how much force do I need so this is also interesting because it's like a control system and so yeah <laughs> so it's quite interesting and um and then the software does it for you so dalam tu ada ada apa ni uh unscented Kalman filter I don't know if you guys learned that. Uh, so sure. the controller is yeah. So this controller is based on this unscented Kalman filter. So if you wanna learn by yourself oh. or interested, so, so this yeah, a type of frequency filter, right? But more. No, it's not frequency filter. It's it's oh. a quite a general filter actually. You can filter uh different sorts of data, and then it's based on probability that oh. the other last formula is based on some probability, and then it will give like an estimate of like what's the next value. So. And it's used also a lot in like this um, sensor fusion, big data, um, apa ni? Uh, machine learning pun ada juga guna some of them. So it's like, yeah, it's a really interesting concept. And then, yeah, so, uh, yeah. And then um, when I was doing this job, basically we we know that our early adopters punya clients, the ones who are like interested in the latest and greatest and Hmm. Who are willing to take the risk are people in Norway because they have the money, they are able to buy this expensive new technology, and then if it fails, tapa they still have money. So, <laughs> so and then because you know the Norway they have these underwater robots to do maintenance on the pipeline, so that's pretty cool. They always have all these like cool toys, and they really want it to be like um, humanless because it's dangerous is one thing also reduce cost because you don't have to hire a lot of people mm. and at the same time kononnya macam in Norway dia macam dipentingkan macam okay then if you don't have to transport a lot of people so you cut down on your carbon emission whatever so that's the kind of that's the kind of motivation that they have for these things so so now that we know that they're like this we focus on selling this product to them and then once this early adopters use our product and then they say, oh, this product works so great. Then we give some history to these people who don't want to adopt our product. This like people are like, ah, aku tak nak lah, tak tahu lah, baca mm. habis, so aku nak tengok dulu orang buat apa kan. So once we get these early adopters to say, to vouch and say like, oh yeah, it's so good, then you can 
capture the next market segment which are these people yang lagi susah nak nak, nak convince kan so yeah so that's how it is so yeah this is a really valid question and it seems memanglah from like a pers like from a personal point of view just susah mm. because we know people personally who are like Alah, aku dah buat macam ni all these years yang okay je why I need to change suddenly dah dah lama ni yeah memang macam tu but that's that's why that's the product managers that's the sales managers job to be able to uh, sell the things that engineers make to the right people and to get the correct market growth but at the same time these sales people pun kena lah faham like <laughs> kena lah faham like not just what the customer needs but like what we do in engineering because they can promise things that we did not make <laughs> so uh, that's, that's a big problem <laughs> yeah so that's why um there has to be a lot of communication between all different functions in the company so that we are all on the same page so yeah and memang this is an issue in every company it's not just in biomedical macam semua engineering company semua ada masalah ni macam sales manager semua macam ah, okay we have this product I promise macam-macam lepas tu <laughs> engineering thing what they keep up or sometimes like engineering things like okay but why we have to do this macam I mean we can use it in that way but we don't understand like why it needs to be a different way why it's not user friendly so it's also their job to make us understand like okay why we need a certain feature so oh. yeah the communication is important very important yes it's very important so okay um yeah i've talked so much sorry guys no no no, no, no. it's very uh, very first <laughs> of all it's very interesting and the second of all yeah. uh, we don't have to ask a lot of questions because mostly you answer the question throughout the, the talk Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so, okay, that's good then. Uh, so, Tapi korang nak buat apa? Like, would you, what kind of interest do you have? Like, do you want to go to biomedical engineering lepas your degree or? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, alright. Okay, in cool. In our class, mm-hmm. mostly uh, very, very interested in uh, bio, mm-hmm. biomedical stuff uh, relation. But focus more on the instrument, right? But in Malaysia, the stuff uh, just interested me to... Uh, I agree. One one thing is, uh, mm. we are for medical electronic, so we are not mm. a core of biomedical. Mm. So we need yeah. to compete with a core biomedical students. So mm-hmm. it's actually, uh, it's really hard for uh, for us actually. Yeah. So can you explain to me? Uh, yes. Hello. Me what? Eh, they are hilang. Hello. Uh, uh, hello. Okay, uh, the back. line, the line is uh. disrupted a bit. Uh. Okay. Okay, tak apa. Uh, can yeah. you repeat the question? So, so what's the difference? Yeah. So, what's the difference between medical electronics and core biomedical students? Apa beza dia? Apa apa, um, apa extra oh, orang belajar? It's a lot. When it comes to medical electronics, we are more into instrumentation, kan? Mm, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm, mm. They're more to the. Uh, Uh, a deeper physio and more to the mm-hmm. mechanics for okay. Uh, the so they're more general more, more okay. deeper. Uh, yes, but very very little on the electrical electronics. Our so ah okay. So you guys more focused. Ah mm-hmm. uh, yes. So we are yeah. two years only in in electrical electronics. Two years only the third and four year that we go down to the medical part. Ah, I see. I got it. Tapi, um, I don't know tu lah. Sebab I rasa Malaysia tak faham what a biomedical engineer is. Because anybody with any background can go into biomedical. And I think especially more we need electric, like we need electrical and electronic engineers. Because a lot of medical products, we should move towards more portable products. So, of course, all this hardware stuff is electronics because it's much smaller and even these big uh, medical machines as well there's a lot of electronics in them and yeah definitely we, yeah. Need, we need a lot of electrical and electronics tapi um, I think Malaysia macam tak narrow, faham sangat yeah exactly so that's why I think if you guys went to like if, if you were approached by the same person that I was from materialized they will say that Oh, you guys are electronics engineers, you're not biomedical engineers. So, now yeah, I kind yes, of understand. Actually, when 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 we 
uh, uh, personally lah when I take the course everyone everyone is like uh, weird uh, mm. uh, what, what the hell are you thinking <laughs> why, don't, yeah. why, why don't you take computer engineering or what not like and exactly like, I had the same the same the same like reactions like kenapa tak ambil electrical je <laughs> the companies are there and then the, the, the salary is there so uh, exactly uh, yeah the this is issue of competitive competitiveness of the uh, medical instrument company in especially Malaysia because uh, they rely just like you said they have funding issue and then they rely this funding from the government right mm, so yeah not not the minimal company to yeah start up just like you said but start up uh, yeah is very, very hard, right? Sebab tu lah, when you have money problems, dia selalu macam ni lah Macam like, okay, then then lagi lah dia macam like, okay Mula orang, is it worth it or not? Then, then, then you say about the COVID uh, breakout or whatever <laughs> Yeah uh, So, for me personally, I think you guys should um, maybe Tapi ni masalah dia juga, sebab Malaysia ni macam Dia macam tak suka sangat Orang ada advanced education Macam master or PhD oh, If you have master or PhD If you have master or PhD Normally I think startups would Appreciate it Untuk more Untuk student master dapat kerja sini lagi susah Daripada student master Kan, I felt the same And uh, and to be honest A lot of like these startups won't actually Are started by people with PhDs Because like Yeah, how else you want to go into industry and jadi boss ni di jelah kan? Apply for grants and do a startup. Um, tu lah. I mean, the, but the thing is, it's opposite in uh, Germany or US. They want people with PhD in biomedical engineering. Um, PhD in industry. Yes, Ooh. a lot of jobs I <laughs> applied. They check out requirement PhD, so it's like. Uh, so yeah, so that's why I'm like I have to work towards it. Tapi cakap nak lah lepas master kerja macam dia fikir lah nak buat PhD. And then the the advantage kat Germany ni PhD dia you can actually do it at a company. Like your company will pay for your PhD. So basically, oh. so basically you kerja macam biasa. You kena kerja kat company tu. Ah uh-uh, just that you kena tulis your thesis je lah, your your dissertation lah. So, memang lah extra work tapi, well, you get paid, you know, uh, <laughs> you get paid more. the same. Yeah, and there are actually companies with advertising for PhD positions at the company. So, like, for example, Bosch, I think you've heard of Bosch, Ken? Yeah, they Bosch. Have, they have advertisements for PhD positions. So, you do your PhD, tapi the, the downside about uh, the cut. PhD dekat company ni, you only get 3 years lah So memang kena habis cepat 3 years for PhD? 3 years, yeah, you have to finish, you have to write your dissertation in 3 years So it's like, ah, uh, stress lah Tapi you get paid the same as someone who is in a permanent role in that position So, it's a good deal Um, So yeah, on paper, memang Germany really is a good place for uh, advanced education and um, cost you okay you can survive here cuma yeah to be honest um everything has pros and cons so the cons dekat sini memang uh life can be depressing sebab of the language barrier and then cuaca dekat sini pun memang asyik hujan je uh, at least where i live and then sunday kedai tutup so it's like memang <laughs> susah tak, tak semeriah susah malaysia sikit. lah Definitely tak semeria Malaysia lah And then pukul 10 Dah kena senyap Like oh. Make noise Nanti yeah, yeah, Your neighbor might call the police on you So <laughs> Memang Life dekat Germany ni Untuk orang yang Yang suka macam Chill Penat Duk rumah Or you know, Pleasing <laughs> Yeah Like like loner boleh lah Duduk sini <laughs> <laughs> Yeah But 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 Academic wise Yes I Definitely would promote Germany as a really good place to do your master and PhD. Cuma tu lah, but when you come back to Malaysia, then that's like where the issue. your issue will come. So it's up to you to decide like what you want more. Do you want to stay in Malaysia more, or do you want to you know pursue your uh, education? Mm. That's all. I'm really hoping that situations improve. 
Malaysia that one day we will also see the value of like higher education tapi macam right now macam like ah, susah lah and then banyak sangat dekat social media ni macam orang suka sangat post macam like oh kenapalah budak master dengan PhD ni entitled sangat keluar-keluar je universiti nak jadi manager like not all of us are like that uh, 10 tahun yang lalu saya pernah macam Azam lah kalau boleh saya hmm. study overseas and yeah. uh, saya tengok movie cerita Rudy Habibi Maybe Ah oh, yeah uh, yes yes So uh, about aeroplanes uh, what you call uh, aero engineer mm. uh, And I know that Germany is uh, some a big uh, powerful company for aeroplanes Yes And yes. then I, uh, I, I guess Macam tak boleh lah nak macam mana pursue study for aero engineer ni sebab saya nak masuk miat waktu tu pun uh, tak dapat mm. So tak tak tahu jalan pathway path, path untuk pergi ke Jerman waktu tu Yeah, um, I'm actually at that university that Habibie went to Yeah <laughs> RWTH Aachen so yelah oh. Ramai orang Indonesia kat sini <laughs> Sebab mm. Habibie dia datang sini So uh, yeah so basically um, nak datang Germany uh, mm. You can look up DAAD scholarships. Sometimes they are the on the DAAD website they are the uh, advertise lah what kind of like masters program do they fund and you can apply and basically they will like coordinate the application to that university and then if successful then you can you are enrolled there and then you get funding from DAAD. Mm. So that's one way. Another way is basically just Memang apply sendiri je lah and then try to apply scholarship MARA when it opens sometimes, sometimes I I, I actually did try apply macam lima kali juga tapi I actually kena reject Malah but okay Kita hmm. <laughs> so, lah daripada uh, MARA dekat diploma dulu Ah ok Jadi Fit dia daripada MARA Deal dengan MARA ni Dia ni pun daripada UKL Oh. Ah, Daniel memang daripada Uni KL So Mara ni mm. dia suka anak buah dia je lah dia punya. I see, okay Very hard tu, habis dia dah keluar daripada Mara ah, Dia very hard Saya, so, I don't exist to me anymore, aku tak kenal kau <laughs> <laughs> ah, Yes, yes, dia yeah, anak kiri dah Walaupun berapa banyak contribution masa mm. Because I have uh, my senior that uh, That uh, dia wakil dalam satu competition ni uh, Wakil Malaysia lah uh, ni Oh nice. Nah, nice, nice, nice Senior dia sama nama dengan saya Cik Oh Cik, Cik, Cik Haa yang tu satu ada dua senior ha. Lagi satu dia dah menang ASEAN punya apa gold medal Lepas tu ni dah jadi MARA Dapat award MARA punya oh. apa oh. Best best student of the year lah Tapi bila dah mm-hmm. keluar je daripada MARA tu Nak nak dapat apa advantage tu Macam tak ada yang dia dapat tapi kena kabel um, dia cuma dia cuma mm. nak dapat sponsor ke belajar New Zealand je dia tu bagi susah gila sebab Mara dah Asa. dah dah keluar yeah. je pada Mara dah mampus lah ya 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 macam tu lah and then Malaysia ni macam now mm. <laughs> tak tahu <laughs> tak tahu lah apa nak jadi <laughs> so, so kena so, kena tapi, tapi, depends kat uh, swasta punya ni lah apa ni ya and um Ya, yeah, tapi kalau nak datang Germany, I think uh, requirement dia 9,000 euro rasanya So that's like 45k ringgit jugalah So when I came here, actually um, I saved up to 25k because of my job Just for uh, one year, for 45k tu just for one year Yes, just for one year, memang cukup hmm. You don't have to work but You can work here as a student. You can work 20 hours a week maximum, and you earn like maybe around. Actually, I can earn around 1k euro. Depends on the company. As a student, 1k euro per month, which is enough. Kalau you do that at student dorm, yeah, you can do student dorm like 200 something je. So ada banyak lebih. But even if you duduk macam like rumah sewa biasa share dengan orang pun like 300 and then you get one case It's still a lot so that's that's the best thing about Germany so even if you just need to have You just need to prove that you have this 9000 then you just datang sini and kerja is totally possible uh, Depends on the city lah tapi kalau macam 
density macam unique gitu. Uh, yeah, rent is like 800 already, so <laughs> mahal. But where I live ni, um, yeah, it's like boleh je dapat 300, so macam uh, kalau share dengan orang. So, um, you can take the risk to come here. Um, the, the other risk is of course like, 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 like all these like, language barrier problems, so memang you should learn German before coming here. Uh, but cost-wise, Germany is the most possible place to do your uh, Study. studies about compare dengan US dengan tuition fee like 40,000 US dollars a year and New Zealand I think is still around like 9 to 30,000 a year and then tak kis tak masuk because you don't like me but in Germany like I pay 240 je per semester which is for a year 242 just untuk tiket bus and even if you're desperate for money you can um as for from the church, they will give one time 240 for to you. Kalau macam sangat, you have some options. And cause dope, I think like, yeah, it's 1k euro per month is like totally enough. I think 800 lah pun. 700 lah minimum. So, it's about, you still have to pay uh, medical insurance here, like macam 90 euro per month. And tu lah yang paling macam sakit masa student. <laughs> 90 euro and then, um, Telephone tu macam, alah, macam um, 5 euro boleh dapat like, per month Dia punya phone plan, whatever And you get like Europe-wide calling for included So dia tak kira long distance if you call within Europe um, Yeah, so and then grocery sangat murah kat sini Sangat-sangat murah so, Rasa macam bila datang balik, bila balik Malaysia rasa macam sakit jantung <laughs> tengok, tengok, tengok harga kat Malaysia macam how how you do groceries here Inflasi yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so You can explore your option lah tapi you need to have savings Um, Yeah, so that's why I work for you and then my dad uh, withdraw dia punya EPF for me So dapat lah that 9,000 euros I think uh I think we have to stop here because uh it's already one hour, almost one hour then a half. <laughs> ah yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I I also need to like yeah. go to work. Because so. oh, for us, for us, we we don't care if we go until, <laughs> yeah, until night. Yeah, yeah. But for you, yeah. you have to go to work. Yeah, <laughs> I have to go to work. Uh, very, yeah, it was nice. Very it's nice talking to you guys. We had <laughs> uh, you you answered mm. a really lot of our question and and open our mind about the industry and so on uh, yeah, very important stuff that uh, we have to yeah. think about our final year yeah uh, so we are very grateful to have you here yes big, of big course thanks to you okay, yeah you. yeah no no problem uh, I, if you want like if you have other questions you can just send me email or if you want another like session like this just you can contact me it's uh, fine yeah. and I am actually balik raya um, Malaysia du- uh, 23 hari bulan ni Sampai hujung Mei So oh, lama If you want balik Malaysia tu? Ah, no 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 last year ada balik oh. <laughs> ada balik. Tapi the year before that 5 tahun juga tak balik Sebab oh, yeah. tahun. Tak, ada mas- tak ada duit <laughs> Tak ada duit <laughs> <laughs> And yeah so um, Yeah so um boleh je like to end oh yeah another advantage kerja kat sini you get 30 days annual leave <laughs> annual leave for oh, oh, semua and semua kerja lah uh. yes and up to 6 weeks uh, sick leave oh banyak tu. yeah uh, in terms of kerja sini banyak benefit lah <laughs> sini banyak benefit lah so oh, bonus selalu lah dapat <laughs> Bonus dapat sekali masa summer and sekali masa winter. Winter tu lah paling banyak sebab like they call it like Christmas money. So masa tu lah dapat 3, 3k juga. 3k euro for Christmas money. Okay. So, okay. I think I think that's all. That's all here. So, all right. We hope we hope that your job becomes uh, easier and more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And you guys also good luck on your like degrees and final year and projects and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for thank you, thank thank you for sharing your experience. 
Okay, no problem. My pleasure. Okay. okay. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Asyik. <laughs> Jangan sejam, tapi bagus. Ada cerita. Oh, function dia ada cerita. Dia basically semua benda yang nak tahu semua dia cerita. Yang Sudah. dia dia sendiri yang cakap setengah jam, bukan aku. Tak senang, lah. senang nak approach lah sebenarnya dia macam wow, walaupun kita nak tahu macam latar belakang pendidikan je pun, latar belakang pendidikan dia cerita panjang. Ah, uh, uh, sebab masa dalam email tu aku dah tulis siasat dah yang macam apa? Oh, question yang kau nak tanya. Apa? Interview ni dia punya purpose uh, Dia nak tanya pasal Job scope Apa yang Apa yang dia buat Lepas tu ni Atau uh, yang dia, dia straight terus cerita Oh Biden lah Kira dia dah prepare dulu kan uh, 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 Dia dah prepare Apa yang kita nak tahu lah Lepas tu dia eh, Very easy to approach kan Dia hmm. friendly Tapi eh, Dia Belajar Canada Semua di Jerman tu Asyik <laughs> kan Dia, dia save sendiri lah tu Patut dia tanya lah Kenapa tak kerja kat Canada kan Ah, ada banyak gitu benda nak tanya tapi yeah. tapi dia nanti dia nanti short short dia short cerita kita pun short dengar so, jadi 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 tak cukup sejam. We fashion lah banyak benda lah dapat kan. Eh, macam tadi apa korang ambil uh, teknik ada punya jawapan dia? Aku record. Aku ada record. 